Are you ready to unleash your full potential and become unstoppable in your success and leadership? Welcome to the Unleashed and Unstoppable podcast, where we provide powerful insights and strategies for coaches, corporate leaders, and entrepreneurs. I'm Alexanne Carter. And I'm Carol Register, and we're certified master neuro coaches who are passionate about helping you overcome your limiting beliefs and optimize your performance. Each week, we'll be sharing actionable tips and strategies using neuroscience from interviews with industry experts to solo episodes to help you live a life of power, purpose, and possibility on your own terms. Join our community of like-minded individuals. Hit subscribe now and let's be unleashed and unstoppable together. Hey, hey, everybody. How are you, listener? We are so excited to be back here with you each and every week, bringing you amazing information to light up your life, to unleash your power, and to help you be unleashed and unstoppable. And today is no exception. And we are here with Brandy Safran. Oh my goodness, am I excited to share with you (laughs) all about Brandy. She is a certified transformational coach and a yoga therapist for women who want to take their body boldly into the next level of health. She wants you to have full ownership of your health, right? And your freedom and your joy so that you can create a legacy that you're proud of. Now, she supports women to believe in themselves. You know, we're all about that here. And to really tune into their body's wisdom to promote healing and take inspired action to bring their goals to life. So we're going to go deep on the body, neuroscience, how it all ties in and bring you fantastic information for your own transformation. Hi, and welcome, Brandy. I'm so glad you're here. I am thrilled to be here. Thank you, ladies, so much for having me here today. It's an honor. Brandy, before you dive in, I also want to let the audience know that Brandy is like the goddess. She is like the goddess for women out there. And so you really are in a treat for her being here today, her sharing her journey. And those of you that are (laughs) listening can't see that. We've got Amelia joining us today on the podcast. And Brandy... She, I just want to acknowledge her for the support during my pregnancy and just Mm -hmm. really being able to connect with being pregnant and Mm -hmm. at womanness, you know, we talk a lot about the high achieving and a lot of the masculine energy and Brandy takes a stand for that female energy so that we can truly become unleashed and unstoppable with the feminine femininity inside of us. So Brandy, I love that today. (laughs) Thank you, Alex. I feel like I am at Amelia's auntie and I, it's such an honor um, that I actually got to meet Amelia in person and hold her. I couldn't wait. And thank you for that acknowledgement. It, it's, it's just a true honor for women to support each other. And I think that's what we're all here for today. Yeah. I I would love to know, I know, Alex, Leanne, you probably have amazing questions for Brandy. I want to know when I want to start this healing journey with my body, where do I start? There's so many things out there, (laughs) right? Yeah, but, you know, I think about it in terms of, you know, I, as a neuro coach and on my own journey, I have a combination of three autoimmune diseases that are so rare that the the specialists in the world are overseas. And I know many of you are like me um, and like what you were saying, um, Brandy, that before we started that you have an autoimmune disease as well. And it can be intimidating to know how do how do I get going on this healing journey? Yeah, well, thank you for um, opening up the floor to autoimmune conditions. And so just, you know, if you're out there, and you're not even sure what an autoimmune condition is, because not everyone knows what that is. It's really the body attacking itself. It's like the body saying, oh, my God, there's something foreign going on inside of me. Let me start attacking. And the 
with autoimmune, it's, it's often we don't know the source of how it happens and how we received it. And it's often not a, an exact cure, exactly like you were saying. There's not a simple route to a cure. So I'm exactly in the same boat as you, Carol. I have a, a bunch of autoimmune conditions. Once you have one, you're so lucky you usually get two or three. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm in the boat, same boat as you. Um, and so your question was, where do we begin? And so I'm going to take us really down to the level of the beginning journey is listening, is learning to take the time to allow our body's voice to be heard. And I know it sounds simple, but we ought, we spend so much time thinking and top heavy. So a lot of times in the, in our brain, in our doing, in our business, in our just doing. And the invitation is slowing things down enough to allow yourself to check in with what's going on in my body. What, what does my body need from me? And can I really honor the needs of my own self? That's powerful. So, and it, yeah. it, it goes into what you were saying about the masculine energy, the the thinking, the analyzing, the controlling, the driving to a point. Yeah, Alex Leon, I know that <laughs> this probably is like lighting you up as you're well, in the space of beautiful motherhood right now. Well, what came to me, and I remember this was like when I started my journey into like meditation, was like my I don't my brain doesn't stop, my body doesn't stop, and to even consider slowing down is uncomfortable. And we know that our brains are wired to keep us in the safe and the familiar. And that uncomfortable piece of the go, go, go is actually what's comfortable to us. Mm -hmm. So for anyone out there that, and I know Brandy, cause you've helped me through this so many times, even through pregnancy to get me to just be and, and be still and seeing how much that can really impact our ability to be productive. And we often times think it's the yeah. opposite that we're always trying to find right? Try to get more done in less time, so to speak, versus really slowing down. And so, so it kind of is a similar question, even with Carol asked you, like, where do you begin? Like, where do you, where do you begin in that sort of sense? Because it can be uncomfortable to sit in silence. I mean, I know you just got back from a retreat where you did several days in, in silence. And honestly, for me, it's <laughs> like I can, I, you know, do the 10 minute meditation a day. I like imagine several days of that, like to me, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult to fathom it sort of yeah. speak. So, so where do you get, begin on that journey to be able to work up to being able to do a retreat yeah. or be able to create that, the automation of that silence of that piece of that mm -hmm. space, especially when you are used to the go, 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 the, the driver, you know, uh, surrounded by a lot of you know, doing and, and noise to be able to find that, that space. Great. So I'm going to, I'm going to answer the question first to go back. Like, how did I, how did it begin for me? And so for me, it did begin when I was 14, I was diagnosed with Crohn's, which is an inflammatory bowel disease. And I was very sick for two years, most of that time in the hospital. When I left the hospital, the doctor's like, you cannot, your body is so weak, it cannot not tolerate stress. And I was 16 and I learned at that time, I was lucky and blessed to learn meditation. And the first time I meditated in my life, I, I couldn't believe that I had a choice to not pick up every thought in my brain. Like I couldn't believe that there was something behind the thinking, like that there was actually a voice, an inner voice of myself and being able to be a witness of all the thoughts in my head. And I get to choose what thoughts I follow. So that was my first experience. I was like, wow, 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 wow. And then I became a meditation junkie at the age of 16. My parents thought I joined a cult. This was way, this is early 90s. So this, no, this is in the 80s. So my parents thought I joined a cult. 
And they're like, something's wrong with her (laughs) because it wasn't popular in those days, meditation. And it was my way of really, that was my first step to calming my nervous system. And then I add to like, I'm a high achiever. I'm a personality. I, you know, have high aspirations and dreams. Uh, And I also am prone to anxiety. So, you know, for some of us, we're either prone to anxiety or prone to depression or prone to checking out. So for me, it's definitely anxiety. And as, as time went on, I also realized that it's not only the meditation, I also get to learn more and more about my body. And so I started to study yoga as an avenue of learning more about the body. So I have been a yoga therapist for 26 years and I have times on my meditation and in my yoga practice where I'm distracted. I am not perfect at it. Sometimes, Alex, I I cannot sit more than a couple of minutes. My mind is going, but I'll set a timer and I'll just keep breathing and I'll persevere and continue. And the meditation, I think what's really important is not to judge it, not to judge the quality of the meditation, not to judge the quality of our practice, that really allowing ourselves to create that space in our schedule that is our space. And it doesn't have to be a perfect practice at all. It can be. There's nothing wrong with having distractions. And then, yes, when you take when I take myself for a couple of days of retreat, I'm away from work. It's different. But on my day to day practice, my meditation is a half an hour in the morning. And then some days it's 20 minutes and some days it's 15 minutes. But it's a daily checking in with my body. So coming back to the body. So if I do not take the time to tune into her. I do not know what's going on going on inside of me. So I use the element of my body, like the element of Mother Earth. And I lean into Mother Earth as well. I practice deeply connecting to the energy of surrender in my practice. So for all women that are listening, they're like, okay, I don't have time to go to a yoga class. I don't have time. We all have time to spend five minutes lying down on the floor, making the time, making the commitment, five minutes, putting your hands deep on your belly and actually doing nothing, nothing but allowing your body and asking the simple question, how are you today? How are you today? Oh my goodness. This is so powerful. Is it not Alex Leanne? Just shake your head. Yes. Cause I know you're taking care of that beautiful baby. And I, I just want to acknowledge you for doing that because we, we just get to be, we get to live our lives authentically in the real. And Brandy, what you said about releasing the judgment, the perfection, the, you know, um, we, Alex, Leanne and I talk a lot about face releasing the judgment and leaning in with curiosity, Um, when that judgment's coming up and recognizing that we have a choice with our thoughts and not all thoughts are even generated by us. We receive other people's energy and their information and that impacts our thinking and being able to know that we're completely free to get back to our true selves. Uh, It's just like, you know, so important. And even what you said about meditation as well, your parents thinking you were joining a cult, look how far we have come. Look how far we, with the science we have, with the connection to the quantum field and the spiritual realm that we have to know that, you know, we can be quiet and be still, we can connect with our bodies and ask, how are you? And we can surrender, you know, surrender for high achievers can sound very scary. And I would love for you to address that. Can I just lead into, um, because when you were talking about that, like creating that space, you challenged me while I was pregnant to, as I woke up in the morning, you know, just as you invited the audience to put 
you know, your hands on your heart and you asked me to put my hands on my stomach. And what came to me there is, is how we get to interrupt the pattern of the alarm goes off. We jump out of bed and it's go, go, go. Being able to get ourselves grounded right off the bat and knowing, as you said, Bunny, it's a choice. Like we can choose as leaders to get ourselves grounded. And you shared on a workshop several months ago, like how, you know, it was even your, your children saw that in you. Right. And they knew that you had that time. And so as leaders who are examples and get to lead the way with our teams, with our families, with people that are around us, when we can show them that choice and, and choose that for ourselves, we really are setting that beautiful example for the, those around us. And so I just wanted to pop in there and say, like, I remember you invited me to do that. And so I just want to reiterate with the audience, like before you get out of bed in the morning, before you know, everything starts up around you, gift yourself that moment of checking with yourself and just being with it, with yourself. So thank you. Yeah, so beautiful. Thank you for that practice and that you took it on and you did it. And it's such a gift to Amelia as well, that time for connection. So I want to address the, this regarding also leadership and the importance of being connected in, to our bodies. Yeah. Um, regarding also what you what you said, Carol, about how we also interact interact with each other. So, as humans, we are wired for connection. Yeah, that's what we're here to. We're, we're wired for connection, and the way that we could connect to each other is when we are in a state of, like you mentioned, feeling safe, being curious, and open, and compassionate, and around it and the that is requires for us to have a settled nervous system so that is we call it the social engagement system and it's the poly a lot of this is based on the work of Stephen Porges of the polyvagal theory so maybe some of you have heard of the vagus nerve it's the longest nerve in the body it's the uh, 10th cranial nerve, and it goes all the way from the back of your neck and your throat and your larynx all the way down into your gut. And when you think about it, you might think also of you know, the connection between the brain and the gut. The information that runs our nervous system, it comes 80% from our gut up to our brain. And then our brain is going to fire the neurons and neurotransmitters of how to react. So I'm going to take the science piece of it, which is the set, the sense of neuroception. How do our body, how does our nervous system take in information? So the first thing I could say it takes in information is between us. Am I safe with the people I'm with? And our body is detecting this, not our thoughts. Our body is checking in. Am I safe in this room? My organs, what is the condition inside of my body? Is there a sense of wellness and relaxation inside of my body? And then the last thing is in our environment, just like, you know, in the environment of the air quality that we're living in, in the in the room that you're in, like, what is the, the environment? We know, like, the, the whole science of Feng Shui, when we're in an environment or in a Zen space, it's like, ah, I arrived, our body feels that. It's not our thinking mind. So this is called neuroception. So this is how our nervous system is regulating all the time without our thought process. And the information from the vagus nerve goes up into the brain. And then the brain reacts by sending serotonin, you know, pumping up the serotonin, pumping up uh, the cortisol levels, all of that according to how our body is taking the information. And in. so what's really key, guys, is that 80% the body is in charge. And then there's the 20% neurofeedback from the mind back to the body to regulate the system. And the vagus nerve is in charge of the digestion and in charge of the heart rate, in charge of our breathing, in charge of our immune system. So it has a huge role in our wellness. It's Besides. huge. Yeah, it is huge. And, um, you know, some of our neurotransmitters are actually produced in our guts as well. And, um, you know, the interplay between those feel good chemicals that we need and the way our body 
and our brain work together to want to keep us back stuck and keep us in the familiar because Mm -hmm. even when it's faulty, because that's what it perceives as safe, right? So, you know, when we're looking at healing with Mm -hmm. the vagus nerve, the nervous system, and that 80-20 interplay, um, it's very interesting to think about what's possible for us. And I would love to hear, like, you know, in addition to having that freedom of choice and that gift, I love that you use that word, Alex Leanne, to lay down on the floor and be still for five minutes and ask your body, how are you? What are some other steps that we can take practical steps to really begin to transform our lives? Yeah, beautiful question. And so needed at this time. And so I also want to bring the aspect of this energy of being responsible as leaders and as women on how we show up and and that energy of who we who we are in the world. And so as a sense of responsibility, taking ownership of the connection with self to be an example that when I am connected to myself and in a grounded state, then if you come near me, you will feel that safety and that connection just by my presence and by my energy. So that responsibility and the ways that we do it is a, it's a definitely taking the time. So allotting the time in your schedule. So it could be when you wake up in the morning that you're breathing. It could be that you really, you really understand like what is your, your body need? Like for me, if I'm not, if I don't have a chance to move enough, I'll get jittery and my anxiety will start peaking up. I'm like, okay, I got to take myself on a walk and just move my body and get like my energy, that nervous energy out of my system. Because if I'm experiencing that nervous energy, that anxiety, I am no good to be a leader at that time. I'm no good to support my clients because they're going to feel that energy and pick up on it because we're so intelligent. We pick up on these things. Am I hydrating my system. So am I, am I present? I don't know about you guys, but that's like, and Alex knows about this about me too. Like I could, I could lose presence easily. I could, I could just be like spaced out, distracted, disconnected to, to myself, to what's even happening here. And so how, what are the tools that bring me home to present? Sometimes it's tapping on my chest you're safe, girl. Taking a breath. I love tapping. I got you, girl. I, I got you. I got you. If I'm feeling nervous, just gentle taps in my heart, sometimes in my face. Um, going outside, taking a, a nice, fresh breath and looking at nature for a couple of minutes. So those are all tools. And so to build a tool box that is your personal tool box. So for some people, It's scents as well, right? Like you could take some essential oils, Mm -hmm. take a moment and then smell that. And then right from there, just do a couple of taps. I got you. We got this. Shake out your body. It's really healthy also just to do some shaking. And then to take responsibility, like if you to be responsible, if you are frozen and and unavailable, we're where are you and how could you come home to yourself? So by building in your daily check-ins, you are building, you're putting money in the bank. And I know that you talk about wealth. You are putting money in the bank of your yeah. gene, of your ability to connect and to be a connection for others to lean into. So does that Support. That's amazing. Yes, that supports so much. And Alex, can you are you can you talk? Because I'm like blown away about well, having a toolbox. That's and, a, yeah. As soon as you said that yeah. to me, I love that. Right, something tangible that you can put together. Right, I was imagining you know, a little stick, you know, in front of you, or something, a visualization that you can take a look at to get regrounded. And that's what I'm 
that's what hit me too. It's just those times of getting grounded and something tangible because it hit me like where I would find my anxiety pickup would be like, if I was heading to a meeting is taking the five minutes before to get grounded and to check in and to work through the toolbox. Um, I know that that had I had known that back before when I was heading to all these meetings, I really feel like I would have shown up very differently versus showing up feeling very rushed, feeling very overwhelmed, feeling like, oh my goodness, right? Like all the things I got to do, it just would help me be present in the moment of the thing that I get to do in that very moment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I love too, Alex, that with the neuroscience process that we use, we use a really simple, clear four-step process for people to be able to recode, removing, actually literally synaptic pruning, removing the those old neural networks with our limiting beliefs and wiring in brand new neural networks with our success beliefs and the truths about us. And here, what you gifted us with truly with this toolbox is all these practices that are in alignment with what we do. There's scientific backing behind tapping. You know, the practice of breathing, I've really come into this year in a whole new way, and it is changing things in a big way. And so knowing that we have tools is something that we want you to understand. You've got tools to change and transform your life. Taking a pause, my productivity goes through the roof when I take a pause. And it's so counterintuitive, right? Because of having been wired in for years to be in the push, to be in the I can't even tell you how much time I've wasted with being busy, right? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't productive. It was counter to my productivity. And then when I learn how to stop and be still, my, my every time it happens, I'm still kind of in miracle mode. Yes. <laughs> so. I think it's so important to know that you have a whole toolbox with the hydration, you know, sleep uh, is an important component we could throw in there, the tapping, the breathing and learning how to regulate movement, the walking, releasing that energy, releasing the anxiety um, that these, these are incredibly powerful tools. They're simple they're childlike simple, but they're, they're so effective. Right. And uh, yeah. What would you like to add to that? <laughs> yeah. So, so what, what's coming up for me is um, that the body knows. So the body has this innate wisdom and our body way before we, we were sex. So probably way before I developed Crohn's, the anxiety and dysfunction that I was living under, I was ignoring, I was not listening to it. So what I would like women really to hear is that because some people are like, well, I don't, it's selfish for me to take up space for me. And I think it's really important to realize that it is selfish not to take care of yourself because you could only be as good as your health. You could only be functioning and, and, and able to create impact if you are healthy. And so the fundamental, I think it's really important that women learn that it is selfless. It's an act of selflessness to take that pause and that we give so much more love and impact and joy, compassion and openness when we are taking care of our own needs. And then we set the example for our kids to take care of themselves, for our co-workers to take care of themselves, for our future generation leaders, that it is crucial that we listen to our body. And like I said at the beginning, how does your body talk to you? And so hands on the body is one of those great tools. And it is a skill that's developed over time. Oh, my tummy hurts me here. Oh, this organ is tight over here. And underneath, once we got the basic skills, the pleasure is also there. It is pleasurable to tune in and let your body start revealing, my God, this feels good. 
And that's joy. <laughs> uh, that's so important, right? That's so important. I know you um, that you're getting those chemicals while you're feeding Amelia right now, you know, and it's such a lovely thing, that bonding, that connection. And I had, uh, really love that you brought in the aspect of doing it you know, for ourselves, with ourselves, placing our hands. And it's a great reminder to, we get to give ourselves permission to feel good. And that it's selfless when we're doing that, when we're taking care of ourselves, because it's impacting and inspiring others. Um, Man, so good. (laughs) Yeah, it's so powerful. So um, how can our listener work with you? How can we work with you? Where can we get in contact with you? What's going on? What can we highlight? Because man, this is amazing, Brandy. Yeah, thank you. So you can find me on Instagram, uh, just under my name, Brandy Saffron. Um, You'll see a lot of pictures of me in nature. I live in the woods and I spend a lot of time hiking and with (laughs) with my dog in the woods. I love that. Um, and you can find, I have a Facebook group called Everyday Sacredness. Uh, the way that I work with women is either in group coaching. So I have a new program called She Rises Rooted that's coming up soon. And I work one-on-one with women to reconnect them to the wisdom of their body so that they can really step forward into the life that they were meant to have. Um, and so I incorporate embodiment and then also um, leadership and coach, uh, transformational coaching so that we get to get unstuck and moving forward together. That is so cool. Okay, we're going to have all of that information in the show notes for you so that you can connect with Brandy. She's got these amazing tools to help you to really believe in yourself, believe in your body, who you are, and to be able to be that leader in the world. Because we're all leaders. We lead our lives every single day. And we're definitely here to empower you in that um, so that you can shine in the world and be who you want to be in the way that you want to be with your incredible gifts because you matter. Yeah. Thank you. No, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me here today. It's been a pleasure and an honor. Any final thoughts, Alex Leanne? Sorry, Amelia is waking up here. (laughs) Um, it's, you know, Brandy, I just appreciate always the stand that you take for women, right? And for women to to be women and to flourish in the the femininity, as you know, I said earlier as we started here, and that just the, the stand that you take for that. So mm-hmm. I want to appreciate thank you and we appreciate you so much for being here today and just the continuous work that you do with women. And something that you said earlier, what hit me is, you know, oftentimes in terms of burnout, right? A lot of women will wear this badge of honor burnout. And what you've said here today is really taking the stand against that so that women can truly be unleashed, unstoppable and in their true authentic self and not have to wear themselves ragged in order to make the impact and be the leaders that they they want to be. Mm. Yeah. Okay, we'll see you next week. We're so glad you're here. Ciao for now. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Unleashed Unstoppable podcast with your hosts, Alexander Carter and Cal Register. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review and subscribe. That's all for this episode, Wildly Ambitious Leaders. See you next week.